resource uh, that I see in, in the Indian agriculture system and compared to the, the way we work in the U.S. is how do you tap into the alumni, the graduates of uh, your right. university that, uh, for instance, Cornell you know, is, is really a master uh, at uh, tapping into and how your own graduates have gone on to become great entrepreneurs mm -hmm. with so, but we just talk about this food science. And this is one area where I do believe and I work with our own agriculture university back in Bangalore and help them with work with alumni affairs as a way to create the database of all the graduates and many of them have gone on to stellar positions in various industries and then tap them into into forming the advisory boards or even pairing them, pairing our students up with to become mentors and in many ways and also the financial help that they could do to the university. I can, I can imagine for an institution like Banaras Hindu University with such rich yeah. alumni <laughs> IITs, yeah. IITs, oh, I think that's a big opportunity. Dr. Dillard, yes, you have a point to. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much for giving the time. I plan to sit here for 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> and I got in trap because you gave my first to Mr. Parak from Pukapu. So I will first start responding. Yeah, Mr. Parak, in fact, we have limited resources and we assign them as per from, from different, uh, like we can say, regions. I'm talking about Punjab or North India. Then I'll come to Mango. <coughs> if Pakistan have, can have 10 quintals, I don't think why can't we? It's simple, straightforward. Because we are producing wheat and rice, so our focus was on wheat and rice. When we talk of fruits, it comes in. When we talk about it, it is a attack. So there has been lack of, lack of a, you can say, interface or whatever it is. I think we definitely can work on mango and try to solve problem or a will solve problem. I am optimistic person. But uh, this is one example of uh, lack of uh, uh, communication. Now coming to diploma. diploma sorry. I don't think any university or any college worthwhile. Give a diploma if you take pen fail or pen fail. <coughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think. Yeah? PA you can give a diploma provided you have plus two pass. Right, yes. Then impart the training <coughs> in collaboration with us right. and we examine that. Right. Along with you. Uh, it's offered from me. I can get it passed. Thanks. You can get the offer tomorrow if you want. No problem. But not the fair. <laughs> then second point is no price transplanter. Again, this is a very good example of lack of interaction. You come to Punjab, I will show you not one, not two, not three, but at least hundred of transplanters which have worked successfully last season in Punjab in collaboration with EAU and Punjab Department of Agriculture. You come during the year, we will show you experiments as well as transplant to field the niche when we imported Chinese one. But now we are working successfully. Right. But you can come up here also and uh, we can have discussions outside. I visited when it failed actually. Excuse me? <laughs> I visited Punjab when it had failed. Oh, so it is long time back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, before <laughs> years back. <laughs> now now Transplanters are working in Punjab. Please, please, come and go. Now coming to reaching out, what uh, uh, Dr. Hanson said, now Dr. Swami said, yeah, there have been the Pune and reaching out. And I have been thinking, trying to analyze why it happened. It happened because SAUs, Antanagar, then Arisa, then BH and others, they came in a time when we were importing food on a very large scale. I may be wrong in my analysis. I don't say that I am very correct. So our focus started with farmers. We have very, very strong linkage with the farmers. I tell you, probably PAU has the best linkage in the world with the farmer. Farmer come in, lacks not in thousands at the farmer phase. Somewhere we should have applied correction in mid-80s or late-80s or early-90s and try to do the same thing with the industry, which we failed. I admit, as Vice Chancellor, I feel that we didn't do that. We did approach some industries, some responded, others didn't. I gave the example, I am an excellent non-creator, 
I used to grow seed industry and they said, oh, they didn't say, but uh, it was very clear. They were getting their blood free, no problem. But on the other hand, IFCO did give chair to PAU long time back, maybe about 20 years back. About food processing, we are trying to rectify the situation with help from, with guidance from uh, Ohio State University, food industry center is uh, coming up and I hope we will make some progress. Now our request to ICR, Dr. Mittal is here. Yes, seeing this gap, I was thinking how to proceed. I am not aware what happened in the last four years. I was out of picture, but earlier I know that we didn't have such an interaction with the industry. We had other interactions or other things. If ICR can ask for the problem, as Mr. Bark or Mr. Singh uh, uh, from Tata uh, said, ask for the issues first, circulate to them, then ask the Vice Chancellor and Director Sir to attend. And let us take the decision here at sir. Rather than prolonging as I have taken the decision now, if they say they will admit uh, plus two, not plus ten, not ten, plus two, diploma, we will award, provided we got collaborative. You know that you uh, do, you train them and then you give it to No, it should be collaborative as well. So that's my request to and here I will just put one point, uh, Dr. Mittal, let us take uh, the sabbatical in the uh, with the industry. I worked in a German university in 1970s and then again I went there in the 80s. And because of my turban, I had many friends. <laughs> and Plant Grid Institute was placed in the same uh, building in which uh, there was Institute of uh, Engineering. When I went second time, and after about one year or so, I met a person, he said, hello, hello, uh, you are back here, and I took my immediately. He was director of the Institute of Engineering. I said, oh, I didn't see you for the last one year or one and a half year. He said, I am in such a such, I am managing director in such a such university, uh, such and such industry, I will name industry. And the managing director there is now professor <laughs> in the same institute. Then I started thinking, oh, can we do it? Yeah, if I do it as vice chancellor, I will be fused next day that I am favoring such and such industry and my scientist, such and such scientist is working for such and such industry, not for the university. So, my request to I said, I can send this proposal in writing. Yeah. Please take lead, yeah. we will follow. I can send this proposal, yeah. no problem. Yeah. But let us take lead at the national level, site at the national level, and I will be first to implement it. So, with these points, I want to go because I want to get away from how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Now, let's move to, uh, yeah, go ahead. Will I, I, yeah, I just introduce yourself. Yeah, one, one small comment to make, though, I know. Uh, so I'm from Kansas State University, though my name is Subramanian. Uh, one of the things probably, I don't know about that we will be ever discussed in this Ag Innovation Partnership meeting that we're having at Radisson Hotel, and, and I think some of my colleagues from the U.S. probably are aware of this, is, is to put out some of the brilliant minds out there from institutions, uh, we need to look at three things. One is student recruitment, retention, and graduation. And I think a lot of universities in the U.S. also do not focus on this, and I will tell you, everybody that walks through the doors of the institute doesn't get out. There's, there's even a lot of university, uh, U.S. universities, the graduation rate, even despite best programs, is less than 100%. Yeah. And also there's a positive correlation between education of the parents and, and the success uh, uh, the students will have, uh, the children will have at college. There's a really positive correlation based on U.S. data itself. So if the parents are uh, university professors, there's a high degree of success for, this, uh, for their children succeeding right. in college. So I think as you talk about uh, training graduate students, and I hope you keep some of uh, this, these aspects in mind because it goes back to mentoring, and now I think the new term is not mentoring, advising, is coaching. So I hope uh, in this... Right. Yeah, we, we talked about the speed factor in, in, in technology change and, uh, you know, through the, the education, uh, you know, content. And, of course, that's what, uh, you know, really keeps institutions on toes to make sure that students are, you know, uh, industry ready and contemporary there. But that also brings to another concern, you know, uh, I'd like to address it to both Bibi and Asim. You know, one is uh, preparing students at entry level so that they can you know, find a job in with all your managers, in the, especially in the food industry, probably you have industry, probably you have an input sector, but if you take process industry, 
58 bottling plants in this country and each bottling plant would have around 50 odd professionals with food. You can do the maths. Now they also need, they are the ones who are actually going to produce it, right? Not my team which is here. So the second phase is getting them ready. So also technology changes. Uh, aseptic is now the way forward. Uh, we also want uh, fruit pieces in the juice drinks. So handling those fruit pieces, sensitive beverages. Um, so a whole lot of learning is constantly required. And my firm belief is every two years we need to go reach out to a university. In fact, that's what my colleagues in Atlanta ask me. Which are the universities you are going to educate? And here I am looking all over the place but not able to give them an answer because I guess a lot of them, uh, my uh, bottling partners in US and Europe, they are very well entrenched with the local universities out there. So A, there is a need. Incidentally, the reverse has also happened. Uh, just near our office, there is a MET uh, University have opened up a section on food processing. So they said, can you come and lecture? So we had Sunil Aksuri uh, lecturing. He is part of my uh, scientific regulatory affairs. Incidentally, he's also in the advisory committee and uh, he also, uh, there's another university in uh, Nagpur where he was called to take uh, the final year Viva. So yeah, we would be here. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to go back to college. And believe me, uh, we, we, we tell every university who really want to reach out, don't worry. We'll pay all the travel expense ourselves. You don't have to pay us. Just give us a cup of tea when we reach there. That's all what we want. Our staying, everything is, is on us. We feel extremely honored to be part of the academics. And we would like them to be a part of us as well. I mean, that's Great. we look up. I think, uh, you know, Dr. Alok Jha is here, who runs an excellent uh, pilot facility in BHU. Uh, I was very impressed with uh, kind of facilities they put together there.